Phew, we doggies. Happy Homebrew Wednesday, everybody. SJ Poor here in the kitchen. In the kitchen of Little Face Brewing. Let's go out into the hot garage and grab a beverage, shall we? Oh, Ooh. Creaking door. There we go. All righty. Leave us grab a beer. You'll have to excuse all of the craziness of the lighting because we've just went into all kinds of different rooms and all that jazz you get to look at my big old belly there we go we are going to have some lemonade hard lemonade and then we are going to set a spell and talk about it. It's pretty good. Not crazy clean, not crazy dirty. You know, whatever. Uh, we'll go out through this way. You get to walk along the whole way down to the brewery now. Out onto the deck. We were just in the kitchen of Little Face Brewing. We were in the garage of Little Face Brewing. We're on the deck. America. America. I'm exhausted. Today was a day. Today was a day. So now we're going to go down to the brewery. I'm going to show you what I did. And, uh, little bit of an improvement happy with it I'm actually really happy with it with how it turned out got rid of the barrels down here and made a bar for in the brewery oh it's nice in here close this you know what? I'm going to go with some softer lighting this time. And we'll hit the LEDs. What do you think about that? Review back. So, there's, there's the LEDs up along the top part. And I'll leave the blinds down. It's actually kind of nice in here. i got the air conditioner in the window. So, right there it is. It's a nice little bar from Little Face Brewing. Actually, this is kind of like the life of SJ is right here in this bar. The top right here, uh, the plywood is a hunk of plywood that is probably damn near as old as me, if not as old as me, from the brickyard days. My dad brought this home, my God, when I was a kid. Um, they got something from North Carolina it was uh, Avery Creek something from uh, North Carolina. Brought this hunk of plywood home, and it's been in this garage pretty much ever since. I actually has carried it around with me because I, I had a bunch of plans for I was going to use it for this, use it for that. I've actually used this thing a bunch of times with doing cooks. Um, I would lay it out and carve up a hog on it or do some pork shoulders and whatever so that's a good piece of history the trim that goes around it you can see here the whole way around nice nice joinery there if I do say so myself these one buys are made from um, a bunch of one this trim is made by a bunch of one buys uh, that came from my time at ACC I got a rail car box car full of cat litter and they use these as corner boards. And of course, me being me, we're not going to throw that stuff away. We are going to take that home and use it for some day. So like 15 years later, I decided what I had left did that. And then the angle, the whole, all the stuff in the bottom, the frame, those are angle iron, three and a half inch angle iron. 
that I got from M&M when I was working there. Bar stools came from the grain bill. So a little bit of a historic, uh, a little bit of a historic deal there. I'm going to set you up here. And we are going to set a spell because I'm beat. Oh. And this bad boy is just about the right height. It is. It works pretty good. I think I'm having sympathy pains for uh, Mr. Mike Dean. Let me uh, bring you just a little bit closer. Sorry about this, but this is live, folks. This is live. Man, I can probably get us a little more light there. And I'll go ahead and give me a little bit of light over here as well. There we go. That probably didn't help much at all, but we'll go with it. I can always turn them up a little bit yet. There we go. It's just a bit softer lighting. Thank you for sticking with me. <laughs> oh, the dogs are barking. They are. Let me get me a uh, coaster that says drunk, <laughs> of which I am not because I just got home. So that is the story. We are now, what, seven, seven minutes in. That's the story of the little bar. Uh, what's nice about this is it has adjustable feet. I can take it out, out on the patio out here under the deck and set up a bar if I want leave it in here it's going to be just about perfect no matter what so uh, i'm real happy with the way it turned out i might put another coat of poly on it there's two coats right now so i might throw another coat on i'm not sure this is actually what's left because i have not been drinking much on it this is what i have left from the um, hard lemonade raspberry lemonade that we took up to nhc so what I did was, when I brought it home, I didn't go through near as much of it as I thought I would. Actually, I didn't think I was going to go through much, that much of it because it's a lemonade. It's not, it's a malt beverage. It's not your typical beer, okay? Um, so what I did was, when we came home, I threw in a gallon of unsweetened iced tea. So I made myself an Alder Palmer. So cheers. I have not had a taste of it yet. So, and it's been sitting like this for quite a while. Oh yeah, that works. It could actually use a little more iced tea. But I'm going to go with it. <clears throat> so what the iced tea does is it backs off some of that real super sweet from the uh, from the back sweetening when it's lemonade. So I know that uh, Man Bear Pig one one two two three three four four five five. I know uh, he and Michelle actually just did a lemonade, so I'm curious to see how theirs turned out. Um, Larry. I think he just did a lemonade too. So Lambo 22, he did one. And it's one of those deals that I typically always have a keg of it around. It's just a fun, it's a fun drink. It's a great one to share with folks. So cheers to everybody and anybody that wants to make lemonade. And if you're into making a hard lemonade, shoot me a, a message and I'll send you the recipe. It's just that simple. Another update I have, we had talked a little bit over the last couple of weeks about the stasis. Found out what the issue was. The uh, tank that uh, holds the glycol that actually goes out, out of the system and into the fermenters, 
um, was cracked. It had a big crack in it. And uh, unfortunately, I did not get any responses back from Craft Brew, where these things are sold. I did get a response back initially, but um, not, not to my liking. We'll just put it that way. Um, granted, full disclosure, I bought this second hand. I did not buy it from them. Um, the person I bought second hand from bought it second hand. So I don't blame him for anything. I don't really blame anybody. When I tore this thing apart, I realized what the issue was. And it was a manufacturing defect. There's no way under the sun it's not possible with the way this thing's designed for that crack to have happened any other way. Um, what it was was on the lid, it's a plastic tank. And the lid was down on, and what it looks like on the one corner, they over-tightened that screw. Well, you can only tighten so far. Pieces are only going to come together until they're together. You can't go any further. And if you do, especially with plastic, you're going to get the weak spot, and it's going to ex explode. It's going to break. And that's what happened. So the one corner was over-tightened. So I went through, after speaking with my maintenance guys and, and different ways and not getting any kind of satisfaction from uh, Craft & Brew, um, spoke with them, and they were like, you know what? Go get some uh, weld, weld bond. Weld bond? JB Weld. JB Weld. So I got JB Weld for plastic, and uh, I put a couple coats on it. And what I, what I did was is I layered the coats. And um, I also got it to where it's in the crack as well. I, I did it in a manner that it wasn't globbed up on the inside. It was, you know, everything's on the outside. and It's nice and smooth on the inside. So it doesn't detract from any volume on the inside of the, of the, of the tank. And I tested it. And uh, it sat here for a couple days, no leakage. So I put it back together. I'm going to actually fill it with uh, glycol either tonight or tomorrow, and I'm going to prep. I'm prepping for brew day this weekend, so we're going to put her to her test right off the bat. See how it does. So, because uh, I like I like the glycol. I just I like the system. I like the idea of it. Um, it it's no bigger than a window air conditioner, but the same size as that thing really back there. So, um, yeah, we're going to go with that. So, built this bar, put it down here, cleaned everything up down here. I actually did that yesterday. Put the stasis back together. Um, I need to put a coat of paint on this keyser that you're sitting on right now. That's a project that's coming up because it looks kind of kind of ratty. Not going to lie. And I also am thinking about making another... Uh, face plate for these taps to bring these taps out just a little bit further uh, to make it a little bit easier pouring beer. So I got all of that going on and uh, yeah I got a bunch of stuff done over the last couple weeks and I'm going through sympathy pains for Mike Dean. My foot hurts real bad and his foot was operated on. Not the same. <laughs> But it must be my sympathy pains for the old Dean's list. Ooh. I also have a, uh, oh, that's good. I have a hard root beer up there as well. That I just chunked, uh, I don't know. Wow, it was a full quart, 100, 180 proof into a keg of root beer. <laughs> There you go. Last ch <coughs> chug of the uh, Arnold Palmer LFB style. <sighs> Sitting at the bar in Little Face Brewing. This is SJ Port, Little Face Brewing. Enjoy the future of your labor, folks. Brew beer. Brew wonderful beer.
and happy homebrew Wednesday. Chugs. Oh, this old body. There's a button over here somewhere. Tell you what. <laughs>